We have been uh, pretty bad. They've been going on for quite a long time. There was a lull in winter, as there usually is, because people don't go out when it's cold and snowy. Now things are starting to kick off a bit earlier than they did last year and the years before. If you've been covering uh, riots, if you're a journalist who knows this, you know that there's there really is like a season for when the riots come out in the summer, when it's warm. And there's also, interestingly, a season for a lot of the illegal immigration. Interestingly, under Joe Biden, we're seeing illegal immigration come sooner. And we're also seeing the riots start sooner. I don't necessarily know what that means, but I can tell you. Mainstream politicians and personalities are absolutely doing everything in the power to make it worse. We had Maxine Waters come out and say, get more confrontational. A lot of people felt like that it was that was jury intimidation. Now we got LeBron James putting out a tweet saying, you're next and posting a photo of a cop. He deleted this, but now it's triggering, an, again, all sorts of controversy. Jack Posobiec over at OAN apparently is calling for a boycott of Space Jam. I think this story together is kind of funny to talk about because it kind of, you know, meshes into the cultural issues that are going on today. So we're going to talk about that issue. We're going to talk about, you know, Black Lives Matter showing up in New York, threatening, strangely, a white guy protesting for Black Lives Matter, threatening another white guy. It's kind of weird. But we also got some big news about Gretchen Whitmer, who got busted flying to Florida. She's also being sued over, well, in relation to what happened with these nursing homes. A lot of people right now are really upset. seems like Andrew Cuomo got away with the nursing home deaths. Well, fortunately for us, we have one of the last remaining journalists on the planet, the legendary Charlie LaDuff, hanging out in studio. How's it going, man? You want to introduce yourself? No. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you, you basically, are, you're doing this reporting on Gretchen Whitmer. You're calling her out for all this corruption. I wouldn't say corruption. I just, I want the truth. Yeah. I, I, you know, you knew Cuomo wasn't going to get rung up. This is just politics. Everything's a show. It's a cycle. It's a cycle. Whitmer copied everything Cuomo did. We took, oh, look, this is what we know about COVID, uh, everybody out there. The institutionalized elderly got wiped out. Yeah. And that's where the government is supposed to be looking out. And if I can't get clear data from my governor who copied the governor of New York and we found out he was smoking the data, then yeah, we're going to court. It's right not on. corruption. This is about how we all live. You're, you might be in an old folks home. You might be in an old folks home. I might be. What about the people in there now? What are we supposed to be doing with all these cameras? We're supposed to be doing something that rights the community that gets this thing back on track. That's why I said you're one of the last journalists, bro. And what is this bug sitting here? That's, That's a stink bug. Hey, you got stink, stink bug. With this whole <laughs> hippie compound you got here, I got stink bug. <laughs> oh, this is the pet. Yeah, no, it's pet. just a stink bug. They're everywhere. <laughs> I think he's dead. dead. He's hanging out. So, so we're going to talk about all this stuff. And uh, you, there, there, you have a bunch of really, really famous viral reports that you've done in the past. A lot of people are mentioning they're familiar with your work. But just hearing you talk about this stuff, they're, journalists today, man, they are, uh, what's the right word, stenographers for the state. They just, you know, whatever the governor says is true. The FBI comes out with a statement like, you got it. They don't do investigation. They don't report. They're just stenographers. We'll get into all this stuff, so I'm glad to have you. We got Ian East chilling. Yo, what up, everybody? Ian Crossland in the house. at Ian Crossland. Good oh, yeah. to be here. Yeah, yeah. And me in the corner pushing buttons. My boss and my guests have both been stink bugged tonight. It's a good night for stink bugs. We're going to have a great stink night bugs. talking about the news. We, uh, we've started collecting the stink bugs. We put them in a jar <laughs> and we give them to the chickens. It's fantastic. They love, it. they love stink bugs. Brown marmalated. Is that marmorated. 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 marmorated stink bugs. They come from China and they're invasive. Jerks. But they're really dopey. They, <laughs> like, from, they, they are from China, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. recognize them from my childhood. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, they're new. But they're like, they're super chill. You know, they'll like just like sit there and chill and then like they'll like move if you try to do something. They Explore. just they don't bother and, you. And you they know? don't freak you out. Like, because I no. have them in my house in Michigan and they smell bad. You, you know, you take in a dump and they, there they are. And it's I, like you talk to I them think and they were, you throw them out the window. They were introduced to Pennsylvania in the 90s or something. Yeah. Somehow. I don't know how they arrived, but then they become this invasive. Well, species. considering this isn't the stink bug show, let's uh, let's move on. <laughs> yes, Good show, so everybody knows. Where's the camera? Where I can there you go. That one right there. there. Yeah. That, That's a stink has. bug. Now you know. They look like little shields. Some people call them shield bugs. Hey, hold on a second. They I, smell I like bad. Them. Let's find out if they're medicinal. Have you ever oh, seen? No, 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 no. Did you? Nah, he didn't do it. No. If you ever see, uh, it's a trick. <laughs> I saw that. I no. object. I hate that baby. No, you didn't. Oh my didn't. gosh. And, all right, and, and all right, good, all right. Let me, let me, let me. <laughs> it's almost as good as this. Oh my gosh. That sounds great. Buy this no, no, no. I'm sorry. It's way better. <laughs> yeah. It's way better. <laughs> Our sponsor today is is Biotrust. Keto Elevate. Check out the link in the description. It is eatrightandfeelwell.com. 
and you can get 51% off while supplies last. This is medium chain triglyceride powder. You put it in your food. It provides you with energy. So a lot of people I know are super into the keto diet. If that's something you're into, this is the kind of stuff you want to add. Because let me just tell you right away. First, I'm not a nutritionist. Okay, so this is just me reading the internet. Take that for, into consideration. Talk to your doctor before you do any dietary stuff. But if you are doing the keto diet, a lot of people think they just eat steak. It's like, that's not keto. Keto is a lot of fat. That's why you get something like this from Biotrust, Keto Elevate, MCT oil. Ian literally- It's he, so good. He puts it in his coffee. Yeah, I just put some in there. Does it burn fat? It is fat. It is fat. It's healthy fat. Yeah, There's it's different. like, it's the good stuff. It's like medium- So you chain. don't have to eat sugars. Right. Okay. You really don't. Right, right. So check this out. Check this out. Go, go to eatrightandfeelwell.com. You get 51% off. They're big on the keto diet. They say you can get many of the benefits, elevated ketone levels without doing keto, they say, if you're just eating the stuff. But let me show you some of their talking points because they have some really good stuff here. You got a 60-day money-back guarantee. You get enhanced energy levels, so they say a healthy appetite management, enhanced mental clarity and focus, athletic performance. They say Keto Elevate is the most advanced MCT powder on the market today and free shipping on every order. For every order today, a BioTrust donates a nutritious meal to a hungry child in your honor through their partnership with NoKidHungry.org. To date, BioTrust has provided over 4.4 million meals to hungry kids. Please help BioTrust hit their goal of 5 million meals this year. Free VIP live health and fitness coaching from BioTrust team of expert nutrition and health coaches for life with every order. And it's tasty. Free new report. It's, it's good. Tasty. It's, it's good. tasty. It's really good. I'll tell you this. Because we also have the collagen from them. I'm impressed. Big Dude, company. We, we, Ian, Shout out Ian's to always trying to put it in his coffee. This, they have excellent products. I'm, it, I'm really it, glad they It tastes like a low-level sugar. Huh. Really? It's like mildly sweet. I mix it with coconut. my smoothies. It makes it like, it, it makes, like I, don't, I don't put cream in it. I'll just put fruit, but then it makes it taste almost like a milk. Yeah, it actually so is, good. tastes good. If it does all that stuff you say. I have coconut powder. Get it. Coconut yeah, yeah. water and MCT oil in this coffee. Huh. Ian loves just every oh, yeah. night he puts it in. And Coconut. I'm like, I'm like, Ian, if you're gonna put in your coffee, just wait until we do the promo. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll put some more in. <laughs> well, if you want more, yeah, yeah, I do. But anyway, go to eatsrightandfeelwell.com. Get, pick up your MCT oil. Seriously, thanks, BioTrust guys. We're eternally grateful for sponsors because you know, in the in the purge era, we need uh, all the support we can get. Mm. So BioTrust, thanks so much. But don't forget to go to timcast.com. Become a member. If you click the members area right up top, you get a bunch of exclusive members only segments. You only can watch these if you're a member. We got a huge, huge library. Look at all these people. We got Michael Mouse so right here. Fun. Michael Mouse dressed like Superman. What's up with that? We got Jack Murphy. There's me with a uh, old school. I'm not going to say what that is because YouTube will get mad at me, but uh, <laughs> you get the picture. We got Sandra Fairbanks. We got Jeremy from The Quartering. Timcast.com, become a member. We have big news. We have major, major updates coming. We're getting news writers. This is all happening very, very soon. We're working on moving as fast as we can, but uh, you got to—you know—we're bursting at the seams, which means we can only move so quickly. But thanks for all of your support, everybody, and don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you're listening on any podcast platform. Leave us a good re review; we really appreciate it. Let's talk about what's going on with LeBron James. This guy's causing controversy. He tweets, then deletes, call for accountability in the shooting death of Columbus 16-year-old Micaiah Bryant. James tweeted. Then deleted a picture Wednesday afternoon of the police officer who was believed to have fatally shot Bryant, writing, you're next. Accountability. The problem, well, I'll read a little bit more. They say less than 24 hours after he tweeted accountability following former Minneapolis officer Derek Chauvin being found guilty, LeBron James took to social media again to call for accountability in the shooting of a 16-year-old girl in a now deleted tweet. Micaiah Bryant, a young black girl, was shot and killed by a Columbus police officer Tuesday while yielding a knife and reportedly attempting to stab another female. Brian's death has since sparked national outrage. I got, I got to stop here and just give my, my respect to these journalists who literally have a video of the woman shoving, a, of the 16 year old girl shoving a woman against a car, taking the knife and pulling it back and then thrusting forward. And they say, reportedly attempting to stab. Wielding, should be wielding. Is this wielding. yielding yeah, a knife? Yep, Copy they messed editor. that up. Yeah. He went yielding to, a knife? Is that, does that make sense? I no, thought you yielding just, a knife makes no I sense. thought maybe you went to public school like me and you just... <laughs> read it wrong? Read it wrong. I didn't, I didn't go to high school. I was going to say something too. So maybe <laughs> I I did. You, no, it says yielding. You say? Yeah, it does. Did, it says did, why. It, did you say yielding? Are yeah. you implying that the author Hope Sloop from uh, WKYC went to public school as well? Okay, well, quickly. <laughs> how do you spell yielding? What, Y-I-E-L-D-I-N-G. Are you sure it's not Y-E-I? Why, it's Y-I-E. Okay, is there any shame? In spelling it wrong? Yeah. Not really. I don't know. I don't exactly. Care. See the copy. Spelling it wrong, no, but if you write a completely different word than what you meant to write. It's like it's right, different. right, right. It's okay I, not to know nine times six, except if you're counting other people's money. 
That's right. right? So when you're on the block yep. and you're facing that, why doesn't LeBron James shut up? Why didn't the media shut up? Why didn't the country shut up? And why don't we move forward in a, in a, in a process where we're not going to blow each other up? I wish, man. This is not entertainment. This why is, is LeBron- killing us. Yeah. That's- why is LeBron James? Sa- <laughs> you know, you know the, the problem I have is this dude, when uh, all this China stuff is going down, Hong Kong, he's, he's, the, the NBA takes a side of China over the, the protesters in Hong Kong demanding freedom, liberty, respect. So this guy now has the nerve to come out, and it's just like, I don't know, man. He's just another, look, if you take it out the fact that it's LeBron James, he's just another dude with Twitter, mm. right? But it is LeBron James. And then even LeBron James, if we could dial it down, he understands what he did. That's why I deleted it. it uh, well, and that's, <clears throat> maybe we give him some credit. Yeah. Like, maybe I, I went too crazy there. Maybe we should calm down. I just, I don't want any war. You know what the problem is, though, man? The reason he says things like this, I know he deleted it. That's, that's true. So, re- fine. I Respect for deleting it, for sure. Right thing to do. Maybe he could say, man, I, I, you know, I, I went too far. There. I would yeah. do it. You know, but but you I know, made mistakes. But look at look what's happening now. In the wake of the guilty verdict for Derek Chauvin, all of Which these, was correct. You think the, the verdict was correct? Guilty yeah, on all charges? Uh, yeah. I don't think so. I think it well, was. Cool. Guilty on all charges. I, I'm not going to hate you, but it looked, no. like, it looked like murder to me, dude. Mm. Yeah, but second degree murder, like manslaughter, I understand. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I say, like you could make an argue from, argument from manslaughter. Well, first degree murder is like premeditated. Yeah. Second, de- S- second is you did it and you knew you were going to do it, or you assaulted someone and they died. And third, and manslaughter is an accident. Right. Okay. And third degree murder is like you're acting in a depraved, negligent manner that results in death. It, it didn't look like an accident, and it didn't look like he meant to do it when he got up in bed. So what's in the middle? Second degree. It. If if we all believe in our process, if we, if we love this country, and those are the rules. Ah. Oh, oh, this oh. guy just spilled oh, beer on yeah. the computer. Hey, don't tell him it's beer. <laughs> it's fine. Everything here, is fine. Would it make it worse if it was water? I got probably probably got to get that off the computer before you here. I blow think it up. My here. problem with that Chauvin thing is that when it came out that he was a high, when uh, that, <laughs> that uh, what's his name was high, Floyd was high on yeah, uh, yeah. Fentanyl? fentanyl and, and methamphetamine. Yeah. Yeah. And that he may have died from like heart cardiac arrest that maybe the cop wasn't responsible and or not it, not only that, that but that the the prosecution's own witness said that Chauvin was was legally allowed to use a taser and chose not to so I was questioning whether or not like I have reasonable doubt that did did the cop being there do it or was he so stressed that he would have died on the spot anyway I would say reasonably again in, well check, check, check this out this, yeah. this, this, See, this I can do that the second degree murder charge was the felony murder rule that if you commit felony assault against somebody and they die, you get charged with second degree murder. Derek Chauvin was convicted under the premise that his detaining of George Floyd was felony assault on George Floyd. Okay, that's, see, you're too smart for me. I mean, you're really paying attention to this. Well, we did. We, All we, I know is I saw a dude, and I, be, I don't know about you guys, I've had my ass beat by the police, because that's where I come from, right? Yeah. I saw a dude. Acting in a crazy, irrational manner. That's usually when police show up. But I don't expect them to be dead at the end of it. And sometimes it does happen. But I'm looking at nine minutes of a guy crying for his mama. Get off his neck. And I he did. did. Yeah, well, he's so, dead. So uh, this, 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 is, this is the thing. I think a lot of people, uh, like I followed the trial. I watched the trial. Most people probably didn't. Derek Chauvin's knee was not consistently on Floyd's neck. He Derek, he sh- he Chauvin should have neck. spoke for himself. Yeah. Oop. Like, I, I lost it. I, I blanked out. I have stress. You know, you should have said something for yourself. Got a constitutional right to the Fifth Amendment. You absolutely complete, complete do. Fifth. And you, you decided to take that. And now. I thought you said a really interesting. Nah, thing. he was going to jail no matter what. And this is the point. Mm-hmm. Prison. When you, when you see prison. Prison, right. Prison. For, life, for the rest of jail. his life. So it's not a life conviction, but all the years combined. LeBron James tweeting this, right? We have a whole bunch of left-wing activists saying in no uncertain terms, the only reason Chauvin was convicted is because they burned the city down. That's not justice. No, it's dumbass to burn the city down. But, but they did. But show, show Figuratively, po- like they burned down a bunch of different buildings in the city and smashed a bunch of windows. Whenever you say they burned the city down, you get all these journalists being like, false, Minneapolis is still a city. It still right. exists. Did we mean they burned down a bunch of buildings? Calm down. You wanted to say, brother? Yeah, you said earlier that it's not. A, this isn't entertainment, man. This, this people are treating this like reality TV. 
it, and it's destroying people. It's making people, they're, they're forgetting that it's real life. And no, it, they, they live on the internet, bro. Mm. Yeah, that, so like that, that, that's true, right? But there's a swath of America where it's really important, whether it be black America or blue America and all in between. To, to some people, it's really serious. To too many of us, it's a ratings grab. Yeah. And I don't want to be that guy. I yeah. want to be the guy that tries to bring something. You, some you used content. to work at the New York Times and where else? Fox. And, and were you the kind of guy that chased ratings in the beginning of your career? I've never chased ratings. Never. I just figured if you did go work, it would do what it would do. And mostly journalism, right? Doesn't get any ratings. So you don't have to worry about it. You can just be in the crowd with everybody. If you that all changed though in the past several years. Yeah, but now tell me, you might get ratings, but who's doing anything that lasts? Look at anything we're talking about, anything we're watching. Tell me, you out there, any of this stuff, are you gonna show your grandchildren? One thing you're gonna put <laughs> in your drawer and question. go, I was alive. Dude, dude, dude. The likelihood that any of these journalists, I'm doing air quotes, would show their grandchildren the things they've done in terms of their work is laughable. Yikes. Could you imagine an 80 year old guy being like, come here, little Billy. This is when I wrote five pictures of Brad Pitt's junk. I won an internet award for that one. <laughs> oh, Billy, gonna, Billy, Billy, it's, Billy, it's Billy. It's going to be in a book. <laughs> I'd like you. I met your grandmother when I worked at BuzzFeed. Here's an article she wrote where she said, Trump is literally worse than Hitler. <laughs> I, don't, I really don't think they're going to be going to their grandkids and being proud of that stuff. I got to say, you know, <laughs> I mean, to make it all about me, um, my time at the New York Times, my wife kept everything I wrote and she cut them and she put them in these big gigantic clip books. So there's three of these things. That's what I'm saying. They're like for my great grandchildren. And then all the stuff I wrote for the New York Times was bound in a book and they translated into Polish and it's coming wow. out. So I feel like I just wrote about, you know, nice guy, uh, Nick and uh, Easy Eddie and regular people. And that's the word of the stuff. If you're doing, uh, what, what would you call it? Like human interest pieces? All of it. You take human interest plus news and you're wrapping into something that somebody wants to read and is consumable. This, this is the thing, you know, if, if they were writing articles where it's like, you know, Jenny's, Genesis Bakery won an award, the community is very happy. I think that stink bug is <laughs> making you feel sick, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's why I spilled the beer. <laughs> the uh, if, if you were in a story that wasn't particularly globally consequential, but it was a good story about the community and about the things going on, I think that's something you want to show your kids or your grandkids. But these people at some of these news outlets writing about Brad Pitt's junk and like, you know, like, what, what, what was there? One article it was like written by some feminist. Like, uh, what did she call it? It was like guys with tight pants. You could see their junk. Yep. And it was like, look at all these guys in tight pants. I'm like, congratulations. That journalism degree is paying off. But you know, the Maybe problem she likes guys in tight pants. I mean, but, but here's the thing. Journalism has become a ratings industry. You know, so they, they, they want the clicks. They want the ads. Well, necessarily so, because the underpinnings of it have disappeared. So you now... It, you now got to give people what they want. So like, there, there is a responsibility of people to. Back in the day, was it like one really wealthy person would subsidize a company to to, to study and, and you know report on anything, regardless of its popularity or clickbaity ness? It's a combination of factors. Marketing was a big was a big play. So I think what uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. Um, Reuters. Do you know about the history of Reuters? Thomson Reuters. Now, my understanding is that the news de department was just an advertising for like legal documents or something. I don't, I don't know the full story, so I'm probably getting it wrong. But uh, I've been I've been to their headquarters a couple times. My understanding was that they had a, they have a private business and the news outlet advertised their business. So that was that was a big thing. These uh, newspapers would sell ads in the papers. They'd sell the paper itself. So if you're selling the paper, you're covering your costs. You're selling ads. You're making more money. And the only place to get media was in these papers. Then you want to sell as many papers as possible. When you're competing with only a small handful of, you know, very powerful and big newspapers in a major city, you got to make sure you're reaching a certain number of people. So for a period, news outlets were trying to hit the lowest common denominator. That meant the news coverage was always fairly close to the middle because they didn't want to offend the left. They didn't want to offend the right. So they had to keep it fairly balanced if they want to maximize the amount of views they were going to get. Nowadays, you get infinite choices. You go online, you can get your news from anybody. Sure, yeah. So now everyone's like, screw it. Let's just go. Give me what I want. They're, they're, they're investors who will invest in a company that does nothing but crazy far leftist stuff, crazy far right wing stuff. And they're like, I got my finger in both outlets. So I'm making money. I don't Silos. care. What, 
Right, exactly, exactly. You know what I know about Reuters? When they built the new Reuters building in Times Square, I was there soup to nuts, and I did a series of stories on the iron workers, the guys that lay the steel. And the Mohawk Indians have been building the skyscrapers in New York since 1900. Wow, really? And there's a whole um, sort of book about them. There's a whole genre about them. And I took it to them, and I said, Did you, do you know these guys? Well, that was my grandpa. Cool. Well, that was my uncle. What happened to him? He fell and he died. And I wrote the next chapter in that. So I don't know about Reuters, but I know that I captured the Mohawk Indians in the next generation. And that's what I like to do. You know, you know what I think one of the problems with news is it doesn't need to be the biggest story that's going to change the world where you're going to win. You know, you're going to be put up on stage and everyone's going to cheer for you and clap. It just has to be good stories. Stories that, that are important for a variety of reasons. Sometimes they're stories that are uplifting and inspire people. Sometimes they're calling out bad behavior from politicians, exposing corruption. And too much of the journalism we have today, you can't even call it journalism. It's tabloid trash. It's, uh, um, you know, listicles. That's why they're coming here. They'd to, like to be talked. Somebody be straight with me. They, I'm sure. Definitely. These hundreds of thousands of people that listen, they don't agree with everything you're saying. No, mostly like it was funny. We had Will Chamberlain here. And I'm like, you Will, Will Chamberlain here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not Wilt Chamberlain. Not the stilt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will Chamberlain. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh Will, the yeah. attorney. Will Chamberlain. Oh, okay. oh. Yeah, yeah the, 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 the conservative, uh, he runs humanevents.com. But uh, he ain't no Will Chamberlain, no, I'll tell yet. you that right now. The stilt. Right. He, Will he, Chamberlain. We disagreed, and everybody in the Super Chats are like, Tim, you're wrong, Tim, you're wrong, Tim, you're wrong, Will's, Will's right. But I guess so long as, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something that people like. When you brought up the, your, your position on uh, uh, Derek Chauvin, and then I presented a counterpoint you said well you know more than i do that's the kind of attitude people expect from a what journalists are supposed to have that if you if you have an opinion on something you're willing to say okay well i'll learn more about it and you know correct well, you call me a journalist i'm a reporter bro reporter mm. honest guy how you want to know that? the difference honest guy how about that what's well, the difference i do my best but the difference between a journalist and a reporter is a journalist went to ivy league no i'm just i, I know i'm gonna get that bs from the a journalist can type without looking. Reporters do it with fingers. A, a reporter drinks with the public yeah, in public. Mm. And a journalist drinks in private with the public official. That's what so they do. This whole thing about journalism. It's, you're a reporter. That's all you are. Yeah, but these people over at CNN, they're the ones sitting oh, down. Oh, those guys. I mean, look at Cuomo's brother is Cuomo on CNN. Fredo? Then, Fredo? Fredo. And then, what a phony. <laughs> All right, <laughs> dude, uh, I've been in the basement. Uh -huh. I've been, I've been, I'm coming up. I'm coming up. <laughs> in his I've son, been in the basement. His you face. were found in the Hamptons on your bicycle. <laughs> your brother's over there writing a book and throwing old people in the nursing homes who infect other old people. Garbage. 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 That's what we don't need. Sorry, that's my... <laughs> yeah, when, I, I would 100% agree with everything you just did. Yes. But that's the point. These are journalists. They complain every day about the, the insults and the threats against journalists when they're literally the brothers of corrupt government officials who do bits with giant Q-tips instead Ugh. of actually telling the people, and they lie about having Did COVID. you ever, Chris, me, you? i never seen you on the block. Hmm. You're a rich kid. I never saw you do any reporting. Did you ever go to a nursing home? Because I went to the nursing homes and I picked up the dead bodies with the body collector to get a look at the nursing homes. Did you? I mean, you're not the moralizer, dude. I don't know who you are. I didn't grow up with you. I didn't. No, he's the guy who covered it oh, up. Oh, come on, man. And I got, it's not political. It's fake theater and we don't need it. Do some work. If you got the work, I'll believe you. If you can present it with some pizzazz, then I like you. You are preaching to the choir. Yes. And they're all cheering for what you are saying. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 new, the media industry in this country is just a bunch of people who are, like I said, what stenographers for the state. Huh? Dad, you got to pay. You know, if you don't pay, <laughs> then you're not going to get the highest quality because to defend the current reporter, they got him doing 18 things a day. You know, you are a stenographer. The governor said this. You don't even got time 
to check out if what the governor said was right. Yeah. You're just pu pushing it. I'm against it. But you do have to assume anything Trump would say was wrong. Yeah, that, that, look, that was, that was I mean, the other thing. Trump's a mess, for sure. Trump's a mess. But there's some things he did that were correct, like the, the vaccines here. But how about, how about, for some reason, the media always said he was wrong? Like, come on, a broken clock is right twice a day. If you're saying he's wrong all the time, so we got problems. Well, the majority of the media did. The ones wearing the blue jacket, right? Yep, that's right. And then the ones wearing the red jacket said he could do no wrong. What about us who wear the vests? We're just here in the they're, middle. They're, they're trying they're, to get along, but they're gone, bro. The, it's like, the, no, no, it's the audience and it's us. Yeah. We're not yeah. gone. That's true. We're not. We just want I'll, something. I'll put it this way. The, the guys in the red jackets... You know, they, they work for smaller and much less ubiquitous news outlets. They're not the prominent mainstream corporate media in this country. What? What are you talking about? Fox News? Fox News is one channel. You got CBS, NBC, well, ABC, oh, well, I, MSNBC, I, I didn't HLN. say it wasn't. Well, everybody knows that. They're mainstream know. media for sure. Yeah. So, but Reporters well, are mainly liberal. That's but, true. But listen, listen. I know I worked at the New York Times. But I'm agreeing with you. I, I'm, voted, what, I voted for Obama twice. What I'm saying is... And Ronald Reagan. You have much fewer of the guys in the red jackets than the guys in the blue jackets. Yeah, but here's the thing. How about everybody take off the jackets and just do what's supposed to be done? Sometimes the guy in the red jacket's wrong, and you're wearing a red jacket. That's right. right? Some, you're, you're supposed to be wearing a, a non-collared shirt when you're doing what we're doing. You're just regular. Well, now you got to call it as you see it. Based in fact. But check this out. You got people like Matt Taibbi, Glenn Greenwald, and Michael Tracy. Are you familiar with those guys? Matt's a friend of mine. Yeah, exactly. Those are, those are the legit guys that are wearing the vest. And there's very few people actually mm. doing journalism. But they're the guys who will come out and say something like, you know, Trump was right about this, that, and this, but wrong about all these other things. And Trump's got attitude problems. As it when, should be done. But why is it when you go to the New York Times, you go to CNN, they're wearing the blue jackets? Look, I get it. I'm if, not answering for him. If Fox uh, News is wearing red jackets. How conspiratorial do we get? No, no. No, it's not conspiracy, it's, it's but it's money. It's, it's, we're we're, we're, try, it's we're trying conspiracy. to guess who they are, you know? Like, yeah, exactly. You were at Ground Zero as a security guard. Yeah. And I was at Ground Zero as a reporter. And somewhere in there is the story. Not so much, well, you know, uh, the city councilman today said mm. that, that there's smoke from ground. No, 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 there were molten, there was rivers of molten steel for months after the building came down underneath the pile. Just molten steel flowing for months. Remember that? I want some physics behind that. Did you ever see a doorknob? Did you ever see no. a urinal? No, I didn't look so. I didn't they were vaporized. Yeah. Mm. Oh, if I might, and dust. not to hijack your show. No. If you um, it means a lot to me. I'm older. It's the 20 year anniversary of 9-11. And if you could maybe throughout the summer, think about it, read something about it, remember some of the names, that would be cool because we're gonna get it for, again, the media. We're gonna get it for one day, the, the big ribbon cutting and parade and speech. And it's so much more than it. It's all of us regular people. That was our day. Those who died, the secretaries, and those that came to pick them up, the firemen, the cops, the regular dudes with long hair, just guys from Queens trying to do right. Remember now, that. Now think about this. Somebody today who's 26 years old doesn't remember any of it. No, I know. They were a little kid. That's cool. But now they're reporters for these news outlets. They don't get it. They don't understand. You know what they do? That's funny. They compare COVID to 9-11. COVID's a natural occurrence I, until we find out about the Chinese lab. 9-11 was mass murder. And then it launched a bunch of bad stuff and a bunch of bad mistakes. And we're still in Afghanistan. Mm. That is a whole different deal. So remember, young people. Yeah. Well, this is, so this is one of the big issues affecting yeah. journalism today. And people are starting to finally get it. Because I'm wondering, like, we, we had uh, this, this lefty guy on the show. Oh, what's his name? Vosh. Is he all right? I think, well, I completely disagree with a lot of his opinions. Did he have a tail? Did what? Did he have a tail? No, no, he's a normal guy. <laughs> he was a normal guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, Bosh. He's good. He's good. Uh, we had a long, long argument. And I think one of the important things that came up was like when I would reference Occupy Wall Street, he was like, oh, I was a teenager. I don't remember any of that. That was brilliant, by the way. What was? Occupy Wall Street. Oh, yeah. So, so look, I'm down there and I'm in my 20s. It's brilliant. I, brilliant I, coverage. I remember all this stuff. 
he was a teenager who wasn't paying attention to politics. So what happens when you get somebody who doesn't understand the financial crisis, the war in Iraq and Afghanistan, 9-11, and now they're prominent media personalities influencing more young people? It's no surprise you have a lot of young people who have a particular political persuasion, and they're all kind of in agreement with, with each other around the same age. Because they don't remember the same things we remember. Right. They don't remember what Joe Biden did or Barack Obama did right. during those years. No offense to them. So when I, right, right. So when I'm like, here's what I don't like Joe Biden. And I'll reference maybe like the extra extrajudicial assassinations that Obama carried out. The killing of Anwar al-Awlaki, Abdulrahman al-Awlaki is two very prominent, uh, notable instances. They don't remember that. They were like, I was 13. I have no idea. What One of the is. most important parts is, the, is, is witnessing the militarization of the United States after 9-11. Like 1998, we were not under, we were not a military. Dude, dude, you could go into an airport. You could stand at the gate and wait for your family to come out. It was, and we weren't at war. It was crazy, dude. And then after 2002, now they can, I think they can drone bomb any American citizen at any time with yep. the Patriot Act legally. Yeah. It's insanity. It's called extrajudicial assassination. Boy. There will be no... Che Guevara anymore. There won't. That revolution business is over. It is because we have drones. We got all That's facial right. recognition. So you can go downtown and burn stuff up. You can go to the Capitol and break shit. They'll find you. I can't swear. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying. <laughs> I appreciate that. And you that. can do that baboonery at the Capitol, mm -hmm. but it's not getting us anywhere. Don't do those things, but I think to your point, we saw a year of people going and burning down buildings across this country. And tearing up the Capitol. But tearing up the Capitol, those people have the FBI putting up billboards, the FBI saying, find out who they are. They're going through facial recognition. They're finding each and every single person. Because that's that. the Capitol. That's right. That's different. Gucci, Gucci store is different to me yeah. than the mm -hmm. Capitol. Well, no, but they firebombed federal buildings. You know, they were throwing explosives. Oh, at I'm sure buildings. they're getting them. I know they got nope. a few. few they cut them loose. The prosecutor in Portland cut off, I think it was like four felony charges for, for, for firebombing. Uh, I don't know the specific charges, but something related to that. Uh, one, one, was, one was felony assault on an officer. So these people, they caught, they arrested, they charged. And then as soon as Biden got in, the prosecutor was like, all right, you're free to go. Well, I like Portland. <clears throat> I do. I really like it a lot. My kind of people. But uh, if this is what you're wanting, beware. That's my attitude. I'm like, I don't yeah. know. I don't live in Portland. So at this point, you know, I can I can complain about the double standard for sure. We all can. If they're if they're only going after one group of people and they're ignoring other group of people, it's like we got to have equality under the law. But I'll tell you this right now. My attitude on the police at this point, if people voted for abolishing the police and all of our arguments <laughs> fell flat. <laughs> Nobody's doing that. Ma Minnes Thank Minneapolis you. did. It's more tweety stuff. No, 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 no. Minneapolis literally voted to abolish the police. It, when Not was literally. that? La uh, end of uh, city council. Fall of last yeah, year. Yeah, and they backed off it. But they. They already lost a bunch of the officers. I know. Then they started dumping money to try and get them back. Exactly. Now they're arresting and charging the cops. Like Kim, you see the Kim Potter thing, right? Why did he get a name drop? Kim Potter. Shout out to Kim the, Potter. But you know, you know the, the shooting with Dante, right? Yes. So this cop. Oh yes, yes. Th see, there's so many of them. Well, the, so the crazy. taser. Right, right, right. But yeah. so, so, yeah. so let's let's go through this real quick, quick, real quick. This guy's wanted for aggravated robbery with a deadly weapon. So that, that's, a, that's what aggravated robbery is, right? He had, he had a Ruger 45. He gets pulled yeah, over. Yeah, he's one of, He's got a warrant on it because he was carrying a piece. No, he, was, he had a war warrant for robbing a woman at gunpoint. Right. So now they also had a, a, a misdemeanor, a gross misdemeanor warrant for So the question gun. is, once, once again, there's a warrant out for him robbing somebody with a weapon. So what, he made bail? No. He skipped, uh, he skipped the... He, so he, he made bail? No, 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 no. He skipped He court. threatened this woman. Yeah. And then he fled. She called the police. They should have warrant for his arrest. Okay. He skipped bail on the gun charge. So he didn't, I don't think he realized he so had. So he never was bail. He was. He right. He was never arrested in the first place. Okay. He had a warrant for that there crime. There was a warrant. Okay. So he gets pulled over and I think he didn't realize. So when they were like get out of the car, he says, for what? According to his mom, they get him out of the car, they cuff him. And then he starts resisting. He pulls off, dives into the car and then they're wrestling with him. And then the cop Kim Potter says, taser, taser, taser. She's holding her gun, though. The cop moves. She fires one shot in, into Dante Wright. He drives off. The bullet kills him. He crashes. He dies. Is it justified to use deadly force against somebody who's wanted for an aggravated robbery charge, who was previously known to be in possession of a, four, a Ruger 45, 
who resists arrest, jumps into their car, and starts reaching for something or doing something out of sight. Should the officer then defend themselves and the lives of others? You want me to, you want me to play God here. Again, that's why we have a process. Now, I, I've got the basics, and I saw some video. I, I can't be that guy. I will tell you what I do know about life. I know that a cop pulls him over and said he's wanted on a gun charge. So immediately they think he's got some proclivity maybe to get, be, be on the lookout. They're talking they want to arrest me, dives in a car. Immediately, immediate, well, I'm leaning. Immediately, the cop's already on high alert. I don't know what you're reaching for. Mm. Who, who the hell dives into a car? I don't dive into a car. I get pulled over. I'm not the darkest guy. My hands are here. Yep. Okay. I, I know what's going on in America. I don't dive in a car. I don't know about... I, I know cops repetitively pull their firearm. They don't pull taser. They don't practice that much with taser. But again, it tells me, maybe, sitting on my couch, she's not the most seasoned person on the street. Uh, I think, see what I'm saying? I think people... Listen, it's I, so... I don't want to burn... And I don't want to fight, well, but so, I will. So here's, here, here's the issue. It's, there's, there's no easy answer to these things. So why are we trying to get one? Why are we doing that? In what, what way do you mean? Like, so what do I think of it? I, I, I think it's confusing, and we got to let it. It was right next to, you know, Minneapolis where the trial's going on. Yeah, so it's just, is, it's, it's high alert. I we can't, hold on, hold on. The, the, point is, the point is, so long as they keep burning cities down. Nothing burned, though, this time. Nothing burned. In Brooklyn Center, they smashed up a bunch of windows. They smashed. Cops. They smashed. And one of the jurors in the Chauvin trial lived there, and they had to drive through a city full of boarded up windows. Maxine Waters said, if we don't get our conviction, and they weren't sequestered for that. That one was, that so, was crazy. So listen, how are, we su so how are we supposed to have the law enforced? If you got some guy who threatens a woman at gunpoint for $800 cash, and then should the cops go and arrest this person? I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not asking you, I'm saying rhetorically. My, my position is, well, yeah, we can't have people going around doing that. If the person then resists arrest and jumps into their car, should the officer then just submit and be like, no, I might get shot, I guess. Or do we ask them? getting that way, isn't it? That's, that's my point. So at this point, I think the only reasonable solution for cops and for the people in the cities is to leave. Because if you live in an area where this kind of stuff is happening between riots, it, it, look, if you think cops killing people is a problem, and the, the, the cops are now going to get arrested in, in any instance where there's a police-involved shooting. Like, so, so going back to, real quick to the Le LeBron James thing, this 16-year-old uh, girl who got shot was literally pulling the knife back, ready to shoot or ready to stab somebody, and the cop shot her in defense of another woman. Yep. And the people there immediately got mad at the cop and called him a murderer. I don't, see it, I, I don't see how you could be a smart person and think staying on the job makes sense when everybody wants you to leave. Regardless of whether or not you or I or anyone thinks it's right or wrong, cops probably shouldn't be doing any of it. The if people say you're a murderer life, for trying to arrest someone for aggravated robbery, maybe you should stop doing that because the public, court of public opinion yeah. is clearly not on your side and you're going to go to prison. I will say two things. That's another demerit. LeBron James was wrong. He knew he was wrong. And I'm going to cut him some break here so the man can grow. Because, again, I don't want to fight more than we already are. Two, we, we do have a problem with police. I don't, it's, a, it's not a majority of police. We have a problem. We gotta fix it. Then I'll say this. I know, this, I know the measurements, but half of all people that die at the hands of cops are white. It's like 61%, I think, isn't it? 61%, 60%. I could be wrong. 60% of the country's white. 20% is Latino, and 12% is black. 50% of the deaths by cops are white. 20% of the deaths of Latino, and 30% are black. So the Latinos are dropped by their proportion, the whites almost, and the blacks two and a half times more. There's a lot underlying that is the problem. I would submit this to you. What kind of Latino people? What kind of white people? Mm. It's a class issue. Yes, it Completely is. Completely agree. Study will show you the less bread you got, the more rowdy you are. If you're from my corner of the world, that's what we do. We party. When you get loud and rowdy, the police show up. I'm not diminishing. 
a traffic stop. And I'm not diminishing what, what happened with George Floyd. Oh, no, no, that's murder. I said it straight up. I think, I think Chauvin got what he deserved. But if we could come together, because remember the rednecks at the Capitol, what were they doing? If the police pig, right? They really showed what they thought about law enforcement. But you know why that was? I don't. I wasn't there. Well, so we had a we have this this year of lockdowns, where small businesses have cops show up, barricade the doors, arrest people, beat people, arrest families for violating COVID restrictions, and then you started seeing these conservatives, these right wing individuals, throwing the blue lives matter and the flag and the, the blue lives matter flag in the dirt, stepping on it, because the cops. Are those conservatives. Yes. Conservatives oh no, no, those weren't. Yet they were. Those were a-holes, dude. Throwing the blue uh, lives matter. Really? Like, uh, I was locked up and I'm angry? Well, aren't we asking people to have some personal responsibility? And aren't they included? Oh, no way. No, 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 man. Okay. When they shut Maybe down. Maybe I'm when, misunderstanding. When they, when they locked down churches and sent the cops in New York to go arrest Jewish people and weld only the Jewish parts Another shut, problem. You got people coming out saying the cops were disproportionately enforcing unconstitutional restrictions and even when the Supreme when you when you get like the courts telling Cuomo telling Whitmer telling Wolf and, and PA to stop doing this they would say I'll just do a new executive order you can't stop me so at a certain point the people on the right were like yo cops why are you enforcing what the courts have already said no to and so they start throwing the blue lives matter flags in the dirt then when it comes down to January 6 these people have no respect for cops they don't care well you know because I know a lot of cops cops treated me well during COVID Cops went to work. In fact, here's where it's at, as I see it, as a reporter and as a, as a man and a citizen. The only government that even responds to you anymore in this country is the police or the paramedic or the firefighter. Do me a favor right now. Everybody call your congressperson. See if you get a call back. <laughs> call your mayor. Call your city council person. Yeah, they right. only come calling on election season. Mm -hmm. So we've asked the people, I don't know where you're from, but of my class, the paramedics, the cops, the firemen, to do all the work of the government, which is of the high class, and they don't answer us. They right. just send factories overseas, right? They give their nieces jobs, and we, we're, we're over here with our pants around our ankles, our restaurants are closed, and you can't explain. You're coming into my shul. You're not letting me go to my mass. And you don't understand? The problem, amongst other things, race is a problem. Everybody knows that. It's green. There ain't I no agree. green in this country. And we're faking the green now. We're but, printing fake green. Yeah. <clears throat> that's, a, that's a whole other worm can. I mean, talking about the inflation, the mass inflation by a bank. By the Federal Reserve. Oh, he said no, it. No oversight. Everyone, drink. Everyone take a drink. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, drink responsibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got and, it. And, and how that's devaluing our currency, creating more poverty, more class div diversity, um, more stress that's causing, could lead to more unrest. I mean, these people, there's no oversight. That's in, that, that, I think, is the, is the real issue. I got I to gotta, I gotta just, just call out personal responsibility. Like, if, if there are cops who wanted to enforce... It, it, look, if you got people on the right and they're saying, we don't agree. Oh, there he goes. Oh, snap. I said Federal Reserve. What a <laughs> joint you got, you're running. If you got. David well, Koresh never did it like this, bro. No. You got. So we have, uh, we have West Love Energy drinks. Oh, yeah, so if you got people on the right and they're saying, we don't want the cops to enforce what the community opposes and the cops say, we don't care. If there's people who are like, we just want to cut hair and the cops yeah. show up to a small town in Michigan and arrest some dude. Or give him a fine because he was given haircuts. Yeah, the barber of Owasa. That's right. You got people on the right saying, stop doing this. The cops say, shut up, we don't care. Mm -hmm. Then why would these people keep supporting the police? You got a First Amendment right to peaceably assemble Let me put it and to speak. Way. Let me put it this way. In Detroit, my capital city, it's the spiritual capital city. It's the biggest city in Michigan. I know Lansing's the capital, but Detroit is the capital. A cop that starts that job. Ready? Drum roll. You got it lightly on the table. Thirty-eight thousand dollars. Wow. America's most violent city. Thirty-eight thousand wow. dollars. Who in their right mind would do that? We defunded the police in Detroit when we did the bankruptcy. Hmm. We took their salary. We took a piece of their pension. We took their medical when they retire. So 
if you want good police, you got to pay. And yes. we need police. You need high caliber people. You need to pay for mental health for them. Yes. Do they go see? Me? Does any community around here require the police to go see a counselor? Just get it off your chest. It's hard. Benefits. We don't have anything. Get used to it. Watch. I suspect things are going to get worse. Something like 260 police departments got defunded last year. Or less funded. They got their funding removed. So Completely removed. Yeah. Well, no, no. no por like defunded meaning that they were taking portions of their budget away. Like NYPD lost, I think, like a billion, like like 20-something percent of their budget. Yeah. This was predominantly progressives calling for defunding the police. Maybe it's because we don't have tax revenue. Could it be a sleight of hand? We're playing the political game, Perhaps. and yet we're broke. Because look at the look at the federal government. Yeah, where's what, it putting that money? What did we just print in the last year? Why is there such a thing as a black Eight budget? Eight trillion or something? Mm -hmm. Forty percent of all currency out there made in the last year was made in the last Depressing. year. The charts look insane. Well, Jeez. we we Boom. must not be depressed. We must be educated and right on, and we must figure out a way. To respect each other, come together. I know this sounds re like a sermon, but I, I do believe that good reporting can give a good reflection of what's happening to us. Now how do you deal with a multi-billion dollar news industry that makes their money off inflaming tensions between political faction, between classes, between races? I left. I don't know what you're doing. I left you. Yeah. We started. We started our own thing. Yeah, I, I, I have the no, no do, BS huh? news hour. No BS news hour. That's your show. Yeah. Uh, I guess. I guess that's what you got to do. You yeah, gotta thanks, get thanks away for the plug. I, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we'll shout it out much, much more too. That's a good way. Become an example of an of a another option. Mm -hmm. What you you, you want to go? Run it down real quick. Yeah, go to it. To it. We'll talk about. We'll talk about uh, uh, Jack Posobiec and Space Jam. I might, real quick. Yeah. I might sneak a cigarette Yo. with your hippies down there. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll try and go quick. Yeah. Shout out. Shout out to Jack Posobiec who turned yes. me on to putting coffee, uh, peanut butter powder peanut butter and in, in my in my coffee. Brilliant. Thanks, peanut Jack. Peanut butter powder. Brilliant. Yeah, we got that peanut butter powder. A scoop of that. He's All right, ladies pioneer. and gentlemen. Being we got pioneer. We got, we got the story it. on Jack Posobiec. <laughs> Thanks, Poso. Bounding into comics reports. OAN host Jack Posobiec calls for boycott of Space Jam: A New Legacy after <laughs> LeBron James threatened police. <laughs> I don't know if he's serious, which is funny. I think he's joking. But I love how these tweets just end up getting news coverage. <laughs> so, peace promoter Poso is his name. <laughs> boycott Space Jam. Yes. LeBron threatens police. All right. The call to boycott the film comes after James posted a photo of a cop on Twitter. He captioned the photo writing, your next accountability. Yikes. James did delete his, uh, his tweet, as Pacific points out. He writes, hi, LeBron James. Why did you delete this? The photo is of Officer Nicholas Reardon. This we get. All right. Okay. Space Jam, a new legacy, is being distributed by AT&T and Warner Brothers, blah, blah, blah. Do plan on taking up Posobiec's call and boycotting Space Jam, a new legacy, after LeBron James threatened a Columbus police officer who prevented a stabbing. I'm assuming they meant to say, do you plan to? Right. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I just read the articles as they're presented. Right. Jeez, copy editing. Yeah, seriously. Give what me a break. Well, I didn't even know there was a Space Jam happening. This is the right? first I've heard of it. Why do I don't, I don't want to watch it anyway? What is it? A remake? Of Wait, hold on. I'm gonna pretend I want to watch it and say I'm boycotting it. Okay. There you go. I do want to watch Space Jam. I love the OG Space Jam. I'm a huge fan of it, actually. I'm actually, yeah. No, Fun I show. I I had no plan of watching this. Fun movie. show. Okay, I'm not gonna watch it. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't have We've watched it. I'm not gonna watch boycott. it. Although I think a boycott. I'm big, back. Big Might fan be, of Space Jam. I didn't wash my hands. It was so <laughs> oh fast. My gosh. So, Quick. Speed is of the essence. Did you just, see? just protect us. I'll, I'll do yeah, that's better. Are you a, are you a Space Jam fan? <laughs> no, man. Did you see no. the first one? <laughs> is that the one with Michael Jordan and Bugs Bunny? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah oh, yeah. come on. Grow up. That's Jeez. silly. Yeah. Um. So the, were they remaking the original? Or is this... Sorry. Can, you, no, oh, that's one. right. You were children when that came out. Yeah. 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 Like it was good for us. Well, okay. Yeah. Of course you loved it. Dude, when this it. came out, and they, had the, they had the Burger King cups or whatever. Yeah. What was it? They had like the glass jar yeah, they of did. jam. Yeah, which, it was fun. And I would, I would, uh, I was so excited to go see that in the movies, man. I think I was like 40 years old. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, you're like what year did that come out? <laughs> nah, you <laughs> must have been your, no, nah, you must have been your 93 20s? or something. Yeah, yeah, I was like 94. Yeah, yeah. 94. It was, I was just at the age where I could realize it was like, Really cheap propaganda. It just seemed uh, like propaganda. It just seemed like cheap. It. What? They were using a basketball player to sell a product. What he product? wasn't like a movie. 
He wasn't a good actor, Michael mm-hmm. Jordan. You oh, you're saying in a movie you're then. saying that they so. put him in a movie for the sake of selling tickets to a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But and I thought it was kind of cool. But I didn't see the movie. That they took sort of like the the Mary Poppins model and brought it back with Michael Jordan. Yeah. You, know? you take animation. Yeah. And and real because that's not really Who Framed Roger Rabbit was I liked in that. It. Time. That was a good yeah. movie. Right? At least one I, I remember that exactly. being a good movie. So they, they reinvented a genre. So this one is just a it's just dumb. how much money you need. It was really high budget too. Who, 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 who you know, you know what this is for? <laughs> They're trying to target people like between my age and Ian's age who have kids, who are going to be like, who loved it. I remember Space Jam. I want to take my kids to see yep. Space Jam. Oh, it's we, so this, this is an example of cultural decay. No, no, <laughs> heavy. No, hold, hold on, hold on. Hear me out. <laughs> Hear me out. Heavy. Here come the Visigoths. Name a Christmas right. song. Something to the bottom. How, how, how old is that? How old is that song? About a thousand years old. Uh-huh. Give, give, give me a more modern Christmas song. Um, I'm dreaming. What year was that song? Of a white, let me finish. Christmas, uh, 1945. Yeah. Can you try another more modern Christmas song? Oh. Uh, Santa got run over by a reindeer. Hey, what year was that song? Oh, like the 60s. Yeah, yeah. So how come... I can keep going. <laughs> we, we, I think, I think the most modern I can think of is "All I Want for Christmas Is You" by yeah, Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey. Exactly. But every, I was getting there. Mm-hmm. Every yeah, yeah. song is I never from the fifties, from the sixties. Yeah. Really, really old. We're not writing new music. Our movies are regurgitations. It's not changing. We're not making new things. We're not inspiring people. We are just saying, "I'm going to do what I did when when I was a kid again with my kids." Instead of Hey, let's write a new concept, a new movie, a new song. Let's let's change it up. We're stagnating. Exactly. Our culture is decaying. When's the last great uh, protest song since Kendrick Lamar? I mean, well, you know, like, we're living in it. Where's the music, man? Mm-hmm. It's too corny and corporate. Where's the writing, bro, man? Bro, bro, bro. When 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 the corporate. biggest protest movement. Where's the art? When, true. Hold on, hold on. When the biggest I protest movement <laughs> is on the same side as Walmart and Amazon. Right. I don't Jeez. think those are protest songs. Right. This I think those protest. are corporate jingles. Yeah. I wrote a Christmas song. It's called It's Christmas Time. It's on YouTube. Oh. Um, That's it. Ian, Can you hum a few bars? I wrote it. Ian wrote it. It's Christmas time something, something, something. <laughs> you don't even know your own <laughs> song. No, no, no. I, haven't, I haven't listened to it in like 12 it. years. But I wrote it. It's, it's, it's too, it could be refined. I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this. <laughs> don't boycott Space Jam because LeBron James tweeted something dumb. Hmm. Boycott regurgitations. Yes. Demand something new. Thank you. Or you know what? Maybe check it out when it comes on Netflix. I mean, I'm, I'm looking. It's not going to be on Netflix. Watch. No, no, no. Netflix doesn't do that anymore. Okay, but you know, maybe, well, maybe, I guess it come out on Netflix. Maybe like check three it out and tell everybody else that sucks. I, 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 look, I'm a sucker. <laughs> I, st- I still get Kentucky Fried Chicken. I will go to Taco Bell. Uh, wait, are they sponsors of the show? No. no. I yet. won't go to Taco Bell. I'll go back to Taco Bell once you sponsor the show. But I do do that. I'm not a purist. Yeah, sometimes you got to use the corrupt system to fix the corrupt system. I'm part of it, man. I no, live no, no. In we're, it. We're, you're making something new. You're doing the No BS News Hour. Mm-hmm. You got something new. We're doing something new. We should are going to be funding up? shows. We, we should hook up. We should, yeah. Wanna, you want to do news? Let Agreed. me know, and we'll, we'll, we'll get some good news going on. Yeah. We're, we're going to do news. We're going to do shows. We're going to do comedy. We're going to do movies. We're going to do sci-fi. Because I'm, I'm sick and tired of every single thing. It's been years, man. Since, when, when was, I, you know what? I like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the superhero movies. Yeah, yeah. But come on. They're just making movies out of comics from 70 years ago. Yeah, yeah but at least I don't got to read them now. Sure, that's sure. It's 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 a great modern adaptation of something that's really really old. At a certain point, Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, and these guys were like, "How about a guy who turns green and gets real strong when he's mad?" Well, actually, I think he originally turned gray. But you know, you get the point. How about a guy who can jump over tall buildings and for some reason he has like ice breath? It was they made something up and they worked on it. It became popular because they worked on it. Now everybody is just trying to say, "I don't want to do the work. I want what he's got. Let me inherit your wealth, and I'm not going to make something new." These companies don't want to take the risks. They don't want to make new, exciting things because it's a, it's a potential risk. I got one. I got one. Yeah. Christmas. Old movies being made into new movies. Old books. Right? Maybe. It, why can't we get a new Ten Commandments? Ooh. I'm so down I, with that. I like that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The movie Ten Commandments? Yeah. 
What's I do. That? Charlton Heston. Charlton Heston. The Ten oh, Commandments. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, remake. I thought you meant to actually write Ten New Commandments. Oh, yeah, that works too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is, I think, more, even more important. I don't know about we'll, that. We'll discuss Look later. Look at the, the Manila Principles. Yeah, the Manila Principles. But why don't six they redo the Ten Commandments? That could be a pretty sweet. I would love to play that role. You, you look like you're getting They're redoing Dune. Hard. Wait, Jesus doesn't come till later. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Moses yeah. is and the And listen, man. I want to ask you something, Jesus. When did you get white? Hmm. Uh, it took <laughs> about 2,000 years yeah. from what I heard. It took the Romans. Yeah. That's right. They're, 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 of, they're, uh, they're redoing Dune. Ian's really excited for that. Oh, Dune? Yes, Dune. Oh, yeah, but I heard it might be woke. Mm. Oh, really? I, I, yeah, I don't know many details. Dune? Did you read it? Dune. Wait, is that like the a, one? It was like a famous 80s Spice. movie, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, was early it, 80s. Uh, Lynch the, did one. David Lynch did it. Wasn't it the dude from the police? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, Sting was in it. Sting. He oh, played really? Big he, flop, yeah, right? Yeah, he was actually really cool. good in that. It was a weird Lynch movie, but Sting was awesome in was it. Was it a big flop? It was, yeah. It, they're they're gonna they, they, tried, they, gave, they did monologues, like long monologues, which don't translate to film. They're good in theater, and in books they make a lot of sense, but not in they movies. Were, they were doing inner, inner monologues. Yeah, it was really it was weird. weird. Like, it would just show his face, and he, he's thinking, and you hear his voice for like three minutes. It's so boring on, in cinema. <laughs> yeah, they, they tried to make a book into a movie without making it a movie. And then in the 90s, they did one with William Hurt and a Dune t- made-for-TV movie, but they translated all that monologue into dialogue, and it made it way more interesting. We just need new stuff. Mm. That's what we're doing. Oh, so we, we, we put our vlog got age-restricted. Yes! What's up with that? What age restricted? What, what happened? What? Just we, made a, we made a vlog from the house showing people the house, because the, the point is, one of the things I'm big on is we got to make culture, which means... You can't just sit around and complain about politics because politics is downstream from culture. Right on. You need to make stuff to inspire people and build community. And so I'm like, we're going to do that. We're going to start a vlog. We started a vlog. We got this Pro BMX Showing them guy. this joint? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got the ramps. We got the out. The oh, no. This place is a trip. Totally. <laughs> no, you walk in here unexpectedly. I walked in today like, what the hell is going on? It's great. <laughs> and and you barefoot. Their the computer's going up. They're, uh-huh. they're, they're Finding your IPN, they're doing IPN. We they're got talk, uh, they're talking about Dracula. I mean, it's like what? We they launched. Got, we they launched, got bows and arrows outside. Oh, we launched race cars over the garage, going yeah, like oh, sixty miles an hour. And we put up this vlog, and YouTube age restricted it. No, you can't. You can't. You can't. Oh, oh, oh. oh we're not showing that. No, no, you can't. It's not real. As far as so, you know, YouTube. So <laughs> <That's> uh, <right. laughs> it's an antique. That's not an antique. What's not an antique? That's real. What is? <laughs> <laughs> so we have a vlog They age restricted it And so that's I guess that's 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 I just Particularly annoying I thought I would what mention is that, What does that mean exactly? You have so to be signed And an 18 years old To watch the vlog mm-hmm. And that's because they think That's actually pre- kind of cool No it's bad It means you can't put on Other websites And you can't share it Okay but you're Creating a new culture So you know what If, Trying if what that vlog's saying Is for real Maybe Come just, find it Just lean into yeah. it Yeah May, we can't make it easy for you. Give some effort. <laughs> that's I mean, right. Maybe that's why they fine. put a restriction on it because they don't want us to actually influence people to be free, independent thinkers who want to build and create and inspire mm-hmm. others. That's why I don't mind people taking to the streets, man. Just don't tear it up. I agree, man. Peaceful protest. Somebody mess with you, drop them. I, mean, I with, think with these. peaceful, be disruptive, but not violent, not destructive. Disruptive means like you kind of annoy people when you're marching down the street and you're kind of, you know, in the it, way a little it, bit. It, wor- it worked with MLK and it worked with Gandhi. MLK got things a lot farther than what Malcolm X hey, was but look, saying but never doing. They, bur- they, they, they set buildings on fire. They caused $2 billion in, in damage and they got their conviction. Yeah, the insurance company, you know, the old argument. Whatever. No, 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 no. The, the, the buildings in Minneapolis couldn't be rebuilt because the, the cost of rubble removal exceeded the, 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 the liability insurance coverage. Well, it's funny. One of the buildings, I won't, won't name the companies, but one of the buildings that got torn up got a sweet deal, a sweet package, sweet tax abatements and subsidies from the city of Minneapolis to build. It's a multinational. Yeah. Why is Why are we doing that? How did this happen? Because they have a main line to the mayor's ear. Well, it's become American culture now. I'll leave if you don't give me your children's breakfast. You know, my child's school, my child, you know, we do okay. So my child doesn't get the federal breakfast program. But I'm an elder. I'm a man of this community. I go see what they're feeding the kids. Generic Pop-Tarts and orange drink. Our money. Now, I am not, I think we all have to feed our children, right? I'm not going to feed your dad for his whole life, but the kid ain't going hungry, not as long as I'm living on the earth. How is it I pay, you reach in my pocket for orange juice, 
It went to Washington. It went to Lansing. It went to the school board. And magically, my tax money for that child, the orange juice transmogrified into orange drink. Some contract. Which yeah. is like food coloring, sugar. And it's vitamin and water. C, so it's okay. It's so not wait, wait, wait. okay. They were supposed to buy orange juice. That's but what they I thought. Orange drink. Why instead. are we feeding our kids orange drink and generic pop tarts mm. when you could be giving them uh, BioTrust? That's keto, right. Could MCT you imagine oil a if in hospitals they fed patients healthy food instead of be amazing. instead of sweet drink? Yeah. It's they think a, about that. a hospital, a place of healing, and they they feed people the same kind of stuff they feed them in public yep. schools. Where would money go? There are a lot of rich people eating a lot of fancy meals. I'll tell you that. A lot of blue coat. Media sitting down with public officials, being stenographers for them, and having fancy dinners. You know what I love about the media that hangs out with the swells? They think they're a swell. They also <laughs> think they're a swell. But you know what I always say? You're a, you're a hound. You're a poodle laying at the table waiting for a scrap to fall off. Ain't nobody right. listening to you. Not when the times get real. You think they are. Anybody out there reading the local business magazine? Yeah. I think uh, just to just to cycle back uh, that the sugar industry is subsidizing like the government in such a way that they're pumping sugar into the schools and the, the hospitals and the prisons. And that's why we see orange drink. There's some contractor, isn't there? There's always a contractor. Let's talk about what's going on with uh, with, with Whitmer. Yes, because let's, let's get into this this big thing you're working on. So we had this story. We got this one from Click on Detroit. Michigan Governor Whitmer blasts criticism over visiting sick father in Florida. State leader reacts to criticism in an interview with the Washington Post. Oh, she runs to the Washington Post. Right. De they're, they're very favorable towards Democrats. Click on Detroit. You didn't cover it. Sorry, guys. You hearing me? You didn't cover it. And then Click on is writing. The governor of Michigan went to the Washington Post? Yeah. So what's up with this story? Apparently, she was criticizing people who traveled, criticizing Florida. Then she goes to Florida. No, we got it. We we are like ground zero for the United States in like raging pandemic uh, cases, COVID cases. Now you know, uh, right around Easter, Good Friday, everybody. I'm not going to lock it down again. And it's now the date is coming. I, I'm not a, pan, uh, a COVID denialist in any way. You know. Okay. Try to be a good boy. Try to respect <laughs> my. He's got his mask. I caught it. I'm over it. That's why I'm not wearing it. But, you know, I'm not a freak. But she says, uh, "Listen, I don't travel to Florida because it's really bad there, and they got uh, this uh, UK variant. Uh, we and they, and I think maybe we got it from them." Number one, her chief operating officer, who's in charge of distributing the vaccine. Beats it down to Margaritaville. She's in like, the Siesta Key or, or something like that. And um, meanwhile, Whitmer's on the day is telling Biden, give us the vaccine, unaware that the COO didn't order the 360,000 vaccines that were waiting for us. Because she's down in Margaritaville. Wow. With the teeny boppers. Oof. While her 18-year-old son is back home with COVID. Hmm. So you're traveling around with teeny boppers. You've been exposed to COVID, and you're the chief operating officer of the state. So I get on to the next one. Doing great. The Department of Health and Human Services, the chief medical director for Michigan, beats it down to Margaritaville. They want to play funny with me. I know it. You know I know it. This, you're going to confirm it or deny it because you know I already know it. But where's Margaritaville? Like, what, what are you referencing? That, that'd be like the Gulf. The Gulf. <laughs> like, we're from Michigan. So these people are traveling down to the Gulf or whatever. They're, they're, they're partying? They're leaving Pandemic Central. After they locked us down, governor told us all to stay put. Try not to go down there. Do the right thing. And her two top health advisors are down there. And we catch them. Part three. Did you go, governor? Did you go? <laughs> she did, didn't she? Because I know you went. She did. Because I'm a reporter. I know people all over the place. There's nothing going to happen we don't know about. But Click On's not going to do it. NPR's not going to do it. I'll leave it to you to ask why they won't do it. 
This is germane. So the governor now says, well, I didn't go on spring break. I went to see my ailing father. Snowbird. Mansion. West Palm Beach. <laughs> my brother died. My brother died three weeks ago. That is not funny. I couldn't be at his deathbed. People couldn't go to funerals. People couldn't see loved ones in the nursing homes. And you're making some cockamamie excuse like this. This is not leadership. It's not. Everything's turned upside down, brother. Our children's lives. They're manic. They're sad. They're confused. Right? They're staring at screens. We did what we were asked. We did not. We thought we were all rowing the boat together. When you know the top three officials in Michigan did this, that boat has sailed. And when I flew into Charlotte, North Carolina this morning, Woo, that was packed. I felt like Gulliver's Travel or uh, Rip Van Winkle. We're like, I haven't seen a crowd like this in a year and a half. And I'm, uh, I'm personally disgusted. And you can parse. You can fake it. Here's what will not be written about the COVID response. It happened in an election year. History will not remember. This is the most important election of our lifetimes that's right okay they won't remember the games that everybody was playing everybody was playing everybody right left and middle history is segment that's really interesting when people talk about the spanish flu for instance mm -hmm. often they don't talk about world war one they start to read about it and you're like oh wow that kind of happened simultaneously for the most part there are a lot of times in history where people will reference something like the great depression and then you got to understand the context around World War One before it, and what, what what led up to these things. But you know, we do a couple, we do we do these things with history. The story was the pandemic. You're right. In a hundred years, they'll be like the pandemic. There will be a separate historical moment where they'll read about the election, but they won't be in the same context. Yes. How we got jimmied, we got gamed. Again, I don't want to sound like a denialist because I've never seen in my lifetime the hospitals overflow. So that's true. Do not even tweet me anything about that. That's true. But who did it hit? The One more time. The institutionalized elderly. The very thing the government's responsible for. So when I see Fauci doing his morning talk shows, what is the nursing home strategy, sir? Because we now know before COVID, 400,000 people died in the nursing home a year from communicable diseases. Wow. And 550,000 died from COVID. We got a COVID every year in these places. Now uh, Biden wants to come with 400 billion to deal with it. Okay, that's good. So, but before we crap that money down a hole, you want to tell me specifically what we're doing? Or are the orange juice contractors going to eat it up? So Jeez. You're, 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 you're talking about what they did with putting COVID patients in nursing homes. Yeah, they took, they took the positive and put them in with the, with the healthy to clear out the hospital. So you, uh, I guess you're suing. I'm suing the state of Michigan for this. We've come up with an asterisk. We have a death Oppose me and, and be reduced be an to rubble. Vital record search. So we add those in. Okay. When did they die? They won't tell us. How old were they? They won't tell us. What was their race? They won't tell us. And specifically, where was their primary residence? Was it a nursing home? Be are you pulling a Cuomo here? Are we trying to hide statistical deaths to make it look better? Because look, as you add more deceased people to a list, and less of the deceased people come from a nursing home, you look like a winner. Why won't you give it to me? This is our data. Why do I have to sue my, this is not the Soviet Union. I think the reason's probably obvious, isn't it? Because the number's probably bad, like with Qu what Cuomo did. Even as right today as we stand, we're no better than average, which is what we like to say in Michigan. We did no better, no worse. Hmm. Mm. Until the data comes out. Teach your redneck account and he'll 
does that count? What happens if it comes out and the data comes out and it shows that it's a lot worse? That's bad. Now, here's the thing. What happens if they give me the data and it shows what they're reporting to be true? Time for retribution. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to write that. That's the honest and dignified and professional thing to do. I just don't think we have journalism anymore. You know, I guess we, we, don't, we don't have real reporters anymore. We do. Should we just name a few? But there's a small handful. Okay, we'll name them. Do that. Let's do that. Be before we dog the whole institution, it's not true. I'll give you one. You give me one. Ready? All right. Paul Egan. I can give you Matt Taibbi. I can give you the national ones. Christine McDonald. I'm, yeah, I'm going to give so, you a look. So who, so who are they? Tell me who these people are. I'm, I'm doing it too. They're, um, they're people in Michigan that do good work. Uh, you know, I'll give you that. I'll, I'll, correct, I'll correct myself. There are a lot of good local reporters out there doing really good work. Yes. I end up following a lot of these guys, uh, men and women, when there's, there's breaking news and it comes from a certain area or a certain city. I know that for the most part, if you go to a local reporter, it's usually pretty good. These yeah. people aren't the ones chasing the national story and grifting to try and make the a buck. The national people chase them. Exactly. And they should be paid more, right? Yep. And they should be respected. And I don't want to dog them because I, I know in Minneapolis, they're for real. In Chicago and L.A., I, I know. Pancho Ortiz in McAllen, Texas. That guy does both sides of the border. Oh, no, there's a lot of us. So we're not dogging reporters. We're dogging the business. I'll tell you this. I think you're right. I think I should correct my statement again. The problem is the powerful moneyed interests that fund all this stuff are not the local journalists who are actually this reporting on what's over. going on. Give me it again, brother. That's right. right on. It is these powerful national... Uh, wealthy interests that are funding who runs the newspapers now hedge funds yeah they're tearing them up you were well, the local newspapers them. are collapsing they can't compete with the Newspa national level. newspapers are over but, but I, 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 I mean, love newspapers you know why they're the best kindling for a natural fire there's nothing better than a news one is like in your fireplace to, yeah <laughs> It, it is. It's, I don't know what else you use to start it. Yeah, you actually, you, you ball it up and it, gets, it helps get things going. Uh, I, mean, I mean newsrooms in general, right? You used to have, man, it's crazy when I drive through some of these small towns, you see a big old, it's like the so-and-so gazette or whatever, and I'm like, they used to have a newspaper here. Not anymore. They don't even have a web uh, newspaper. Because they can't compete at the national level. Yeah. The, the ads have become, you know, Google and Facebook contributed to this, but it's also that the New York Times can serve local ads. So the big players dominate the market. If you live in the middle of Nebraska and you go to, the, you go to these big prominent news websites, you're going to get ads for the middle of Nebraska. You're going to get ads for your local grocery store. So you don't need the local paper selling ads anymore. And then if people are like, if I'm going to pay for news, I'm going to pay for the New York Times. Why would I pay for a local paper? 100%. So uh, what I do with my podcast is I try in the week to do one big solid story so when i do it that's ours and only ours and we beat everybody and you gotta chase us for instance saturday is the seven year anniversary of flint i bet you nothing was gonna happen in the great state of michigan until i just said that did they they, they finally fixed Bring the pipes it. right I'm, i got you hello everybody at home i got you hello new york times i got you remember flint they finally fixed the pipes, right? Yeah. No? Yeah, oh, man. Still bad? Yeah, man. It's like, you know, you know what they got in Flint? Orange drink. <laughs> they, they got that news click. No, they didn't. So it's still bad. <laughs> Ain't nobody drinking the water in Flint. Yeah. What did it do to us? Flint! What else? I was thinking like, I think it's always been bad for humans. You know, it's always been like we're struggling to survive. We're lucky to be alive. And now it's just less bad. Mm -hmm. But like there's still lead in the water. Like there's not feast. We, we have clean drinking water, which is kind of a first in humanity. I guess the Romans maybe started to. So it's not like it's falling apart. It's never really been that great. You know. Well, but look, come on. It, you'd be better off in the middle of the woods finding a, a a dirty puddle and drinking it than you would the water in Flint. They had chemical plant runoff and they had lead eroding in the pipes. Well, it's not that bad now. I mean, but right. I, w I, w I would like to 
actually go back and have a muddy Strive water and some and some land that's some mine and some you know like one of these BBC movies about the Vikings where I'm running Do around and, you know, shooting elk and stuff. I, yeah, I wouldn't mind that. But you don't live very long. Yeah. I, th I thought we were supposed to be improving. I smell rot. That's what you've been talking about. I think, I think no matter how much technology improves, there's always the, the struggle of maintaining things. Like, we still have people who live in the middle of the wilderness. We still have people with their, I mean, they're undiscovered tribes. We could develop all the best technology in the world, and I still think there would be poor people who are living in, in squalor. Yeah. The world's getting crowded, isn't it? Yeah. Or as yeah. a great philosopher once wrote, What goes up must come down. Spinning wheels, going around. Do you think who, that who was that? I don't know. <laughs> BJ <laughs> Thomas or something. We could evolve to a place where humans are all like consciously aware, awesome, connected, unified. Or are we always going to have a segment I of people that are like these dumb, it. like kind of dumb animals that need to be herded? I kind of like both. I like the dumb animal. And the superhuman. Because remember what Freud really said, break it down. The civilized person and the animal person, the, you know, the wider they get from each other, the more unhappy you are, the more anxiety. The animal gives up his pleasure for longevity. That's the civil person. That's really, I thought he was brilliant. That's really what's going on in our lives. Are we going to be animals? Are we going to be civil? Or I, I like being both. You got to have a good mix, man. You got you to think long term. You got to. But people don't want us to be that. No, they want to be short term. They don't want us to be. They don't like the animal part of us. Right. They're they want to be robots. You have to be nice. You have to be nice and be nice at work. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Don't say Wash the wrong words. Wash your hands. And don't say the wrong words. Because for so long. Tell it to the hand. The animals get angry. They start banging the, the bars and then they start ripping things down and blowing things up. And that's what the, the government and the people in power are afraid that there's going to be some sort of chaotic. I don't even call it revolution, but chaotic evolution or de-evolution. So they're like, no, we have to create strict rules. We want these people to be to follow us. They, we want us. We want them to use our money that we say. And I think it's it's holding us back from turning into like the Homo sapien is going to evolve into some other type of hominid or some a bunch of different types of nah, hominids. robots, bro. And, and like cybernetic gonna, gonna, hominids, a, a brain in a jar connected to a car battery. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly what we're about to become. All the above. That's one way to put it. Psychics. <laughs> There'll be wild animal humans. There'll be humans on Mars nah, that are dude, like dude. bigger. There'll be humans in, in deep space that are really long. There'll we're going to cybernetic we're gonna integrate humans. ourselves with machines. That's been that, that's that's one that's what thing you're going to do. No, that's what the, I'm gonna become the goal psychic. is for a lot of these these wealthy industrialists like Elon Musk, Neuralink. Yeah, they he's a, they he's a want guy. to integrate humans with machines. Well, why wouldn't we? Because look, oh, trickery is already just a hobby. we tethered ourselves Chaos. to one. Dude, we got right. the, we're, we're interfacing with these we're, machines right now. Yeah, but this one, How bad yeah, these for sure. But that. this one is part of me. This phone is, and if you make it so I can stick it inside myself and never lose it at the bar, I might do it. What if they hack it? Well. And they start making you think crazy things, and all of a sudden you just go nuts. That's called marriage. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are worried about the Neuralink stuff because there's so much we got we to gotta discover. But my, my response to the Neuralink stuff, when people are like, would you get it? Oh, I wouldn't get it. I'm scared. It's like, let the technology happen before you start talking about whether you're worried about it or not. This is exponential. You know? if, I went, if I went to you 15 years ago and said, would you want to put a tracking device in your pocket where the government can see where you're going and, and big corporations would know when you're pooping? You'd be like, no way, I'd never do that. Now you're like, I love this thing. But I'd go like, what do I get for it? Access to the summation of human knowledge. I would be like, mm -hmm, that's interesting. Maybe. In fact, we did. So it's no use going back and asking the, the question. We all knew that. Right. Yes. Yeah, people are going to Neuralink right up. Did you see Terminator 2? Have you guys seen the movie? I'll be back a again. Long time ago. I thought it was uh, like a dystopian fantasy when I saw it in the 90s. And now I'm realizing, whoa, dude, that might that actually works. happen. That's crazy that machines could, we, we give over to this thing and then it takes control. Do you, do you see the new Terminator where I guess like the machine nanoparticles infected the dude and he became a cyborg person or something? Mm -mm. 
So in like one of the later movies, I don't know, they made too many of these. Like, I guess, what, what's what's the name of the kid? John Connor, is that his yeah. name? Yeah, yeah. He, he apparently gets infected by nanotech, which integrates him with Skynet or whatever. And he was like, I guess the story was something, I could be getting it wrong, so correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. He said something like, Skynet realized they couldn't win, so they decided to integrate with humans. And they're like, quick, kill him. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. What's wrong with that? Like, he's he's super powerful. He's like basically indestructible. He's still him. He's doing his thing. Wouldn't you want nanobots to make like you know it's like Tony Stark in the in the in the in, in Avengers where he presses the button on his chest and then he gets a suit of armor? Wouldn't you want to be suit like have superpowers? Have not, not only that, I'd like to be the governor of California. Yeah, afterwards that would be though, when fantastic you, when you, as well. When you retire, so you don't get the analogy, do you? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, you did get the analogy. Yeah, Terminator. Uh, we'll just we'll just take that out and uh, you know. <laughs> this is live post production. Oh. So so imagine, <laughs> what? Imagine this. <laughs> You didn't tell me that. You didn't know it was live? I didn't mean that, Governor. <laughs> I didn't mean it. I love you. So so imagine right now when we're all like, we're okay with these phones in our pockets, tracking our every movement because of the powers we get from it. I got to say like, okay, you got to integrate with the machines, but you can also have superpowers. You can jump real high. Your hand could turn into a sword. But I bro, I just, I turned off location and I just want to check Facebook. That's not how it works. Even if I turn location off, I'm, yeah. I'd be in track? Yes. Yeah. Really? Yes. No, and and I, I told all the apps you can't track me. Yeah, they can track you. Welcome to the future. The my crazy friend. thing is you don't know. Let me let me explain because something. Because the code let me, is proprietary. Let me, let, me, let me explain. I actually, I actually thought I was getting away with it. Would a VPN is no. turning it all off? You well, just don't so, know. So hold you on, don't know hold what on. the code first, is, is doing behind your back. It's, in order to connect to the VPN, it has to connect to a local tower first. And it has to register your device on that tower first. Do defy the design of an VPN protects your browsing. So, like, if you're looking up, you know, pictures of dogs, they won't know you're looking at pictures of dogs. But they will they will know where you're, you you are at hitting that tower. They can ping me. Oh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Your, top, your, your phone has to be like, hey, this is Charlie's phone. I want to do something. I'm not going to tell you what it is. That's different. So, yeah, you're being tracked. Let me, let me explain something to you. You know that you have voice activation on their phone, right? Yeah. You you can say, uh, what is, you know, you, you know that phrase. I don't want to say it because I don't want to turn people's phones yeah. on. Hey, but Judy. You, machine. Yeah, you say, hello, phone, and it turns on? Yeah. How does it know you're talking? Because you it allowed it to access your phone. And how does it know you're talking at that moment? Um, because I pressed the button. No, 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 no. You can activate it without pressing the button by saying it's there. <sighs> what? Ghost Ghost I can this say, we got, we got one of the Amazon devices, right? Creation. It's just sitting there in the room. Listening. But if I say its name, it'll turn on and say, what would you like? In fact, if you, go to, if you go to your settings, it'll act, you can look up the things you've said to your device, and it'll say, this was not intended for the for, you know, name of device. That means your phone right now, in order for it to be able to know you used a voice activation command, the microphone is always on. Always. The way voice activation works,